Buenas, buenas. Welcome to InstaFesta Online. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and in this video, we're going to look at how to use Manipulator and Gatekeeper from Polyverse. Now, Gatekeeper and Manipulator are two very special plugins that will save you time and are very creative. They'll save you time because the function that they have, the functions that they have, would take otherwise tons and tons of hours, probably dozens of hours, to try to repeat by chopping up audio or by doing automation by hand. So Gatekeeper makes it so that you can basically set a looping automation uh, and much more because as a clipper and a, and a booster as well. And then Manipulator has um, not just pitching and format shifting, but also harmonic shifting, alternators, uh, steer winery effects, uh, detuning, and a feature where you can uh, turn non-musical voices into uh, polyphonic choirs. You can do quite a bit of uh, sound design work with these plugins. So let me show you guys some of the demo that I have here. I'll play you back the first half of this demo because the second half is going to focus on Comet and on uh, uh, I Wish. So if you guys are interested in those plugins, make sure you guys stay tuned for that class. But without further ado, let's check out this demo. Welcome to the magical land of witches and wizards. Alright, so that's the first half of the Polyverse demo. We're going to focus on uh, Manipulator and Gatekeeper here. Let's start off by looking at Manipulator. So as you guys heard throughout the track, there's tons and tons of vocals. So we have uh, this uh, spoken word of vocal right here at the beginning. Welcome to the magical land of witches and wizards to the forbidden force. Here you will find Werewolves. And this is actually all my voice. So let me play you back the original track right here with no processing on it. Welcome to the magical land of witches and wizards. And essentially what, I, what I've done with my voice is to try to make it as deep and as raspy as possible with my own voice. So. Uh, for example, I'll say, um, welcome to the magical land of witches, but I can only go so far low and I'll let, uh, manipulator take the rest of, uh, the task for me. So let's load up, uh, a manipulator here. And what I'll do is I'll show you guys how the pitching works, how the formant shifting works, how the harmonics and the alternator work. And then we're going to look at the musical example where I make chords with my voice. So let's take a look at this right here. Let's pitch this down. Let's do five and we'll do five on the four minutes. Welcome to the magical land of witches. And we're getting pretty close. Actually, uh, let's take it down an octave just so you can hear what it sounds like. Welcome to the magical land of witches and wizards. So you can really make creature sounds if you like to. Let's bring this back up to, let's say, minus 5 and minus 7. Now, you'll notice one thing. As I'm bringing the pitch down, my voice is kind of getting choppy. Welcome to the magical land of witches and wizards. So, to get rid of this, there's a smooth option right here. 
if we drag this right here, see this? Left click and drag, we can smoothen this out. Welcome to the magical land of witches and wizards. See that? We can get a pretty natural sounding voice. Now, uh, let me pull up the preset that I made for this. Just so you guys can hear this exactly. I pitch it down seven semitones and I only pitch down a format five. So, yeah, and then we'll bring in the smoothing right here. Let's take a listen to it. Welcome to the magical land of witches and wizards. And then once you run this through a little bit of distortion and a few other effects, it's going to sound like an actual voice uh, that's not your own. So this is really, really cool. Now, this is the really, really impressive section with Manipulator. And you'll see why. So let's uh, loop this around and let's play back this little section again. Okay, so what this sounds like without any effects is this. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures running, flying everywhere. As you can tell, I'm not a singer. I'm not even trying to sing because I'm not even going to fake that. Um, as you can see here in the Spectrum Analyzer, my pitch is all over the place. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures. I'm not even able to keep the same pitch when I'm trying to repeat the same vocal. So, um, with the help of Manipulator, I can make my voice sound quite a lot more musical. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures run and find everywhere. As you can see there, now these notes are getting sustained. Magic. And now um, I'm actually able to put this in a track and have it, you know, not sound like some simple spoken word. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to set up that MIDI channel. So it's going to depend on DAW per DAW, but the first thing you have to do is load a pen manipulator onto your channel uh, that you want to affect it. Uh, and then you got to see the track name, right? In this case, it's main Vox 2. And then I'll grab the MIDI channel that I've added. And this one, you'll see, is routing out to my main Vox 2 channel. Insert 4, manipulator MIDI input. So that's how I'm able to send melodic information to Manipulator. Manipulator is going to grab the cycles from my voice and repitch them one by one. So it's almost like doing like granular stuff, which is really, really cool. So as you can see here, I've made it so that the MIDI comes in slightly before my actual vocal comes in. And then the other thing I've done with Manipulator is I've set this to pitch gate. So now this is gonna uh, pitch along with the gate. And on top of that, we have the mono gate mode, and then we also have the polyphonic gate mode. So that with the polyphonic gate mode, I'm able to have these chords that I have throughout the track. Now, with that in mind, I have the uh, mid uh, detection algorithm. There's a high detection algorithm and the low one. So if you have a female singer, you probably want to use the high uh, detection because they usually have higher pitch voices. And if you have a male singer, you want to have a low or a mid. Uh, just to show you guys the differences between them. Let me play it back a little bit. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures running fine everywhere. And you see that it kind of adapts pretty well to each algorithm, but definitely the one that sounds the best is the one where your vocal range is at, and mine is in the mid range. So I'll choose that one. Now, the next thing I've done here is I played around with the pitch just a tiny bit with the formant, and then I smoothen this out. The next thing I did was I used a tiny bit of the alternator. Now, the, what the alternator is, as I said earlier, we're trying to change the grains from the, from, uh, the unpitched voice that I have down to the note. Now, the alternator is going to create octaves or repetitions of this. So, in this case, I have it set to an octave, and then I'll set this to 12 semitones. Check this out. Magical 
Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures running wild everywhere. So now we have um, a cycle that's pitched down one octave, and then another cycle that's pitched up another octave. In this case, I'll just use my pitch gate effect uh, and make it polyphonic, and then I'll just add a, light, a tiny bit of the alternator to make it sound like there's more voices, but not people playing in different octaves. So let me bring that to somewhere around there. I'll keep this at an octave. If you press shift, you can change see the degree to which you're uh, changing the parameter. So without that, you're basically changing by one digits. If you press shift, you can change by decimals. Let's check this out. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures running fine everywhere. So right there, I basically find the spot where I'm like, okay, it sounds like there's more voices, but I'll definitely bring it down. And the same thing with the octave. I think I had it one. So then I bring this down right here. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. If I really want to go for the octave, I do an octave right there. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. And there I'm sending it up two octaves. So you guys can go and play around with anything in between if you like. Uh, you could also turn off the snap and not have to deal with the uh, pressing shift on your keyboard. Now the next thing we have right here is a harmonic shifter. So this will change the harmonics in your voice. So look at the spectrum analyzer briefly. Magical creatures of the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures running everywhere. So this will actually change your harmonics. Uh, it's quite interesting. So check out if we change the ratio here. Let's do a ratio of uh, zoom odd number. Let's do something like 375. It's gonna be quite odd. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures running fine everywhere. We're starting to get this decent sound because it's not longer uh, harmonic. So that paired up with the FM, we can use it to create some really eerie effects. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures running flying everywhere. You can almost hear how, how it sounds like a ghost there at the end, even though I'm not even trying to sound creepy. Let's push up the FM harder. Magical creatures everywhere. Now we have this effect like a talk box, and we play around with this, we get these various type of phaser effects or organ effects, whatever you want to call them. So I suggest you guys for, uh, play around with the harmonics tab and then figure out what you guys really, really like out of it. Now, in my case, I brought this down because I just wanted to make use of the alternator. Let's bring it down the FM. And the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is, let's take off the smear and the detune. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures running, flying everywhere. So when I turn on the stereo. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. I start to create some stereo information out of this mono signal while not destroying the mono signal, which is very, very impressive. There's actually a plugin called Wider from Polyverse, and I suggest you guys check it out. Let's see if I have it here. Yes, I do. And this is a free plugin that you guys can get, and it's the same thing as the Sear Winer here. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures running, flying everywhere. And it actually does a really good job at keeping the mono signal intact. So I suggest you guys check it out. So let's add the steer back in here. And then the next thing I did was I added a the smear to smooth things out. 
Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures on the loose. Magical creatures run and fly everywhere. So I use a smear because the smear allows different cycles to be smeared across the playback. So not only are you playing that one cycle that you're supposed to be repitching, but now it's bringing some of them forward and backward. So it's really cool to, to use this. And you smear this a lot, you're going to get almost like a delay effect. Magical Let's turn that detune down so it's not as dissonant. Let's try one more other thing. So you see down here, I have this thing called the meta knob. However, when you first load up manipulator, it's not there. So I'm going to activate it by pressing that power button and I'm going to select it here under my modulation tab. And I'm going to select the type of step you want for this modulation. In this case, I want bipolar. So I'll leave it like this and then I'll click on this and change it to B. So instead of being positive or negative, it's bipolar. And now I can control multiple parameters at once. So let's say I want to move that and that one as well. And let's say I wanted to add a bit of FM modulation on this harmonics. Let's go ahead and change it. So now we have this synthesizer sound, right? But it doesn't sound like it's really on beat, so we can we gotta fix it. Let's say I wanted to do an ADSR. And now this MIDI that I have sending to this uh, audio is going to process this signal right here. So I'm gonna FM this a bit. Everywhere. You can hear that I'm also playing this to the format, so that's quite quite cool. Let's run it the other way. That's very very impressive. Um, we also have a envelope follower, another ADSR, and MIDI as well, so you can do note, velocity, pitch wheel, mod wheel, and after touch. So we have quite the possibilities of modulation. Um, yeah, this is a very, very um, complex plugin, even though we see just three sections to it. You know, the, the pitching, harmonic, and alternator section with the stereo detune and the smear section and the modulation section. So it's quite impressive for what it gives you on this GUI. All right, so here we are with uh, Gatekeeper. Now I'm gonna teach you guys how to use it, the basics of it, how to get around it, and a few uh, cool tricks like uh, using stereo panning to make nice effects, and also how to transient process some of your drums, and how to remove some drums if you don't need them from a, from a stem bus, or, you know. Now here I have a gatekeeper. I'm gonna show you, of course, the basic stuff, the sidechain stuff, and the gating, first of all. So here I have uh, two gatekeepers on this uh, I Wish vocal that I created. The first one is a gating uh, gatekeeper, and the first and uh, the second one is a sidechain gatekeeper. So let's play both of them together. <laughs> So we hear how we have one and it's doing this plucking sound and then this reversed effect. So this is a preset, it's called Dramatic Reverse. It's the second one and it, I really like it. It works fantastic on lots of sounds. Uh, even if you have smaller notes, not necessarily pads, but like little screeches here and there, or little bleeps, 
it still sounds pretty cool it also sounds fantastic if you put this on reverb it sounds super cool now the second one is the gatekeeper uh preset that's i use for side chaining it's something i made myself very very simple so let's close this uh gatekeeper and let's start off with this one and we'll init it and let me go and explain how this works so here we have uh the gatekeeper of course here we have a node and this is basically how we set the level so let me play this right here so you see wherever this line is that's what the level is going to be that at a specific point in time so if we uh, press Control and scroll wheel to zoom out let's make this four bars let's say we won't put a node right in smack dab in the middle now this is going to rise up in volume and it's going to decay <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Now, what's cool about this is that you can create this depth in the mix by using Gatekeeper, or you can create pumping effects and whatnot. Okay, now let's say I wanted to create that sidechain that I have in the other one. What I'll do is I'll just make a, a two bar loop in this case, and then I set this to quarter notes. And what I'll do is I'll create a node on every quarter note, and then I'll set this to eighth notes, and I'll create another node there. This one, I'll rise it a little bit. E even if I'm not exact with this, I can fix this later, watch. Now, let's say I want to grab all these nodes. I can right click and drag to select them all. And I can bring them all the way up to the highest amplitude. I could also drag them down and notice how they keep their, their dynamic information. So this is really, really impressive that you can do this with the plugin. Now, I'll keep them at zero dB. The next thing I'll do is select all these, left click and drag to change the curvature on this. As you can see, these are narrowing down. And the next thing I'll do is just grab these. Boom. Make them nice and curved. Forward. Okay. <laughs> See how cool that is? I can now, instead of having to use a percentage to dictate how much uh, decay or, or um, uh, lowering level I want, I can just decide right here. So instead of using a compressor, I can just come in here and say, hey, I want to make 9 dBs of space for my kick drum. I can set it right there, right around there. Fantastic. Now there's plenty of other tools here to create other getting effects. If I click right here, there's a square to create your uh, typical uh, square wave effect. Cool. And there's a ton of these. There's a smooth tab here. You can also change the panning on this. So I'll show you a few co little co uh, cool tricks with that. But for that, I need to have the stereo uh, version of uh, Gatekeeper, which uh, conveniently is the same one, but I need to go to a stereo track. So here I have a mono track. Let's go over to the to the bus, Fox bus right there. And here we're going to be using Gatekeeper, but in stereo mode. As you can see, I've activated a secondary um, uh, sequence here. And this one's panned all the way to the right, while this one's panned all the way to the left. So now we're going to have movement on the left channel and the right channel be different from each other. See that we some we get some pretty cool effects. Now what I want to show you guys here is if I use this the the sine waves over here. Let's use the sine wave. And I set this to be a whole bar. 
let's choose three bars right or five bars like that and we'll make it rise and then we'll do this do the same over here let me get right oh of course i gotta set it to be every bar and we'll set it to rise as well and now i'm going to select all the nodes on the channel that's pan to the right and i'm going to zoom in here and offset them a little bit so let's grab this grab these all okay Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to grab them. Just I'll set them a tiny bit. All right. So now we have this cool Haas effect that we've created. Um, let's go ahead and try Gatekeeper up. On a couple of drums. So let's go to my drum bus. Let's hide this area right here. Now let's say we get this track from our client and he wants us to get rid of uh, the hi hats. Now I don't want to go throughout the whole track and remove them manually. So I, what I can do is use Gatekeeper. Uh, use this right here and get rid of the offbeat hi hats. And I can even use a bit of a curve here to smoothen that out. Or I can completely just chop off everything that's on the half to make space for, let's say, an offbeat bass or something of that nature. And I can use the smoothness here. To smooth things out. Likewise, I can just grab these right here, also smooth them out manually. And that's sounding pretty clean. Now, you can use this on uh, different ways. You could also uh, mute the uh, second uh, step. So let me erase these. Let's grab this guy, bring it up. mute the second and the fourth beat completely and let's see what that sounds like so now instead of having to chop up my pieces of audio i can just do it with gatekeeper trigger with midi turn off and on whenever I like. If I want to further transient enhance this, so let's say I wanted to make the kick drum a bit more punchy, what I could do is make a, a little hit right here, and then I'll press B to press boost, and now look at the kick drum uh, before, let me turn them off for a second. See that? It's It still needs some click, so I'll press B, B, and I can make it click here. See that? I made a clicker by using the B and turning on the boost. So that's really cool. We also have a built-in clipper, so you're not clipping. See that difference is enormous. So this will help you out uh, doing some transient processing on your drums and also uh, fixing up any climaxes that you might have. All right. So that's going to be it for this gatekeeper uh, part of the video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it, that you learned something new. Uh, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel so you guys can stay tuned for more Insta session videos. Make sure you guys check out the other class that I have on Polyverse where we're going to cover Comet and uh, I Wish. Uh, and we're going to be doing some 
really crazy wave table um, voice manipulation stuff with iWish. So stay tuned for that. I want to thank you guys for being here with us at Insta Online 2021. Once again, I'm Kevin Ochoa, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. Bye.